Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And Skyrim's a, let me see here, generously sized game. With no shortage of diverse and colorful NPCs that populate her frozen lands. These characters can be pretty interesting, and often carry their own unique and fascinating personalities and backstories. Though, some of the faces we meet in The Elder Scrolls V won't be there by the time we've reached 100% completion, if you catch my drift. A number of Skyrim's inhabitants are indeed set to meet a predetermined, untimely demise at some point in one of the title's various quest lines, no matter the player's actions. Such folks condemned to see their certain destruction can be intriguing to look into, though. So, in today's video, we'll be exploring my top 5 doomed characters in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Starting off, we have the tragic tale of Vigilant Adolvald. You can learn this man's story and watch him meet his unfortunate fate during the opening stages of the Dongor DLC questline. As his in-game name implies, Vigilant Adolvald is, or was, a member of the Vigilance of Stendar, a faction that'll be in pretty bad shape once the DLC has been installed. As soon as the first Dawnguard quest has been triggered, their headquarters, the Hull of the Vigilant, will be destroyed, left in ruin following a vampire attack. And later we learn from a survivor at Fort Dawnguard that most of the faction's members have been scattered. At first, nothing about a vampiric attack on the Vigilant seems out of the ordinary. The Vigilants of Stendar hate pretty much all things Daedra related, which vampires very much are in the Elder Scrolls universe. So conflict between the two makes some sense. However, if one is really curious and attentive, during the quest, Awakening, one of the first the expansion offers where we're sent to Dim Hollow Crypt and ultimately meet Serana for the first time, we can learn the true motivations behind the sacking of the Hall of the Vigilant and the story of one man at the center of it all. Towards the end of the dungeon, a restrained Vigilant of Stendar named Vigilant Adolvald can be found, being questioned by a small company of Volkahar undead, who will quickly murder him to death after it becomes obvious that he's not answering their questions and being pretty uncooperative. Sadly, his death is scripted. Meaning even if we somehow manage to take out the Bloodsuckers, Adolvald's fate is still sealed. Near his body will be his journal, and in it we learn just how truly depressing Adolvald's tale was. Apparently, leading up to what would be the vampire's attack on his faction, Adolvald was pretty much the only Vigilant who took their threat seriously. His concern led him here, to Dim Hollow Crypt, in search of answers. He knew the vampires took an interest in this place, and he wanted to come here and bring something back to show his comrades to get them to understand what was at stake. Alas, it was this very digging that caught the attention of Lord Harkin and his crew, and provoked them to attack the Vigilants in the first place. They weren't planning on striking, but when they realized the Vigilant of Stendar was on their trail and may have valuable information, all of that changed. Further dialogue with survivors of the attack confirms this. So, in a way, Adolvald was not only right, but it was him being right that led to the demise of his entire chapter, and in the end, himself as well. A pretty unlucky series of events. Next on our list, Arniel Gain is a Breton mage, and among the most highly respected professors at the College of Winterhold. Throughout the earlier stages of the college's storyline, he plays a relatively minor supporting role in a few quests, and overall seems like a pretty decent guy always being kind to the Dragonborn, and not nearly as arrogant as some of the other fellows at the college are. But Arniel's most notable for the small series of side quests he offers the player, called Arniel's Endeavor, which will be unlocked after you've progressed past a certain point in the guild's own main storyline. You see, a huge focus of Arniel's research has been on the Dwemer, and he'll send the Dovahkin on a variety of missions to several dwarven ruins to recover artifacts and bring them to him. Initially, the professor will be hesitant to reveal too much about the exact nature of his studies. But as you progress with him, Arniel will eventually confess that he's trying to solve the very mystery of why dwarven civilization disappeared in the first place. Quite a big question he seeks to answer. However, as anyone who's finished Arniel's quest will tell you, it doesn't really work out like he's hoping, and the man will suffer quite a peculiar fate. Once all of his quests have been taken care of, Arniel will be ready to conduct what he calls his final experiment, the moment of truth where he believes all of his curiosities will finally be answered. This experiment involves hitting a warped soul gem with a dagger named Keening that Morrowind fans may recognize. 
After taking a few swipes to no avail, with pretty much nothing happening, just as Arniel gets discouraged and begins to fear his work was all for nothing, he'll take one last strike. And with that, he'll just straight up disappear. Just like that, Professor Arniel Gain will be removed from the game, never to be seen again and his quest will be flagged as completed in your log. As you might imagine, the subject of his disappearance and this quest being left on a cliffhanger is quite a big mystery in its own right. And what actually happened to our friend is a topic that has stirred quite a bit of debate. Curiously though, despite his vanishing, this won't be the last we get to see of him. As after the quest ends, we'll be given a unique spell, called Summon Arniel's Shade which allows us to summon a Shade of the Mage to act as a follower for some time. So, while Mr. Gain may have been doomed to leave the Mortal Realm, perhaps he's found what he's looking for on the plains of another. Coming at number 3 is the ever-so-intriguing and somewhat spooky series of events surrounding Sola Trabatius. We can learn this man's tale and briefly get to meet him towards the back end of the Ulfdan Dwarven Ruins in the Pale. As we first enter this location, there won't be many actual characters to meet. Just a series of abandoned campsites, journals, and some blood trails that tell a strange story. Apparently a group of explorers, researchers, and soldiers ventured into this icy glacial cave in search of precious ancient artifacts. They were led by an Imperial by the name of, you guessed it, Sola Trabatius. As we descend deeper and deeper into the caverns and uncover more and more journals, the horrifying fate this expedition suffered is made clear. As the crew got settled in, they started hearing strange noises, and ever so slowly as days passed, members began disappearing. It soon became obvious that they were not alone. The gang was being stalked and hunted by Falmer. As the team realized what was happening, members demanded they turn back. But Sola refused to allow this to happen. He would not abandon his life's work. He would press forth, and any risks would just have to be taken. And so, in the deepest crevices of Ulfdan, one by one we'll uncover the bodies of many of the expedition's members, who were captured by the Twisted Beasts. Though lucky for him, Sola and his personal bodyguard, a red guard named Umana, managed to evade death and capture, and pressed forth with their mission. At last, towards the end of the dungeon, the player can encounter the pair. But Sola won't be in the greatest mental state. Upon detecting him, he'll be in the middle of a conversation with his bodyguard, and will sound somewhat deranged, as if this whole experience has gotten to him, and will lash out at Umana as soon as you detect him, prompting the two to battle to the death. Now, Sola will almost always lose this ensuing fight due to him boasting poorer stats than his guard. However, even if he somehow wins with a bit of player intervention, he'll be hostile towards you too, and you'll have to kill him anyway. So his fate is pretty much certain. Likewise, Umana will attack the Dragonborn when she's done with Sola too. So no matter what happens, in all actuality, both of these characters are going to have to kick the bucket shortly after we meet them. Unlike the other two NPCs we've already covered on this list, I don't expect many people will be especially sympathetic to Sola. It appears his greed led to a huge number of unnecessary casualties, including his own, and ultimately he failed at his mission anyway. I guess the lesson to end this story on sort of writes itself, just don't be too greedy especially if you're in a dark cave. For fourth spot, I think it's safe to say that this one is sort of a classic, but definitely deserving of a mention nonetheless. Rogvir is, of course, the man we see poised for execution in the middle of solitude upon her first visit beyond the city gates. His crime? Allowing Ulfric Stormcloak to escape the capital after he killed High King Torig. Before Rogvir stood on this block to be beheaded, he was once a city guard, and shortly before the events of Skyrim kicked off, Ulfric Stormcloak killed Solitude's Jarl and Skyrim's High King Torig in a duel and fled the city. It was Rogvir who opened the gates and allowed him to run home free. Now, the circumstances of Ulfric's duel with Torig are fiercely debated in Skyrim. Some allege that since it was a duel that both parties agreed to, Ulfric had every right to leave the city after winning, and our boy Rogvir did nothing wrong. Others argue that since Ulfric used his voice in the battle rather than his sword, for those of you who don't know, Ulfric pretty much just shouted the king to death, he cheated and was guilty of a crime. No matter, since Solitude's an imperial city, you can imagine no mercy is going to be shown to Rogvir. And after a brief reading of his rights to him, and some final words, the Nordic former guard's head will be rolling for all to see. 
Much like Vigilant Adolvald, Rogvir's death is scripted. So even if we interrupt the execution and take out the guards and the executioner and protect him for a little while, Rogvir will still perish out of the blue anyway. His fate has been sealed by the overlords at Bethesda. Although, if you do decide to align with the Stormcloaks in Skyrim Civil War, the Dragonborn can see to it that Rogvir is avenged and his actions weren't for nothing. You'll even get to hear some neat dialogue by the new Stormcloak occupiers after the Siege of Solitude has been completed regarding him. Take a listen. It's too bad they executed Rogvir before we got here. And finally, last on our list, we head out to the Reach, specifically the Hold's capital of Markarth, to meet the fifth doomed NPC in this video. No, not that woman being stabbed in the marketplace. The person behind her, doing the stabbing, Waylon. Much like Solitude, the city of Markarth has a unique world interaction that'll be triggered once you visit the city for the first time. Where, as you enter, you'll watch as a woman is stabbed in the town's marketplace by a fellow named Waylon, who, when committing the crime, will shout, The Reach belongs to the Forsworn, before being struck and down by guards. Now, Margaret, the character being stabbed, can actually be saved if you move quickly and kill Waylon before he gets to her. But we'll talk about this lady too in a second. Unlike Margaret, Waylon's death is absolutely certain. Even if you let him do his thing, guards will still see it through that he is stopped before the man hurts anyone else. This Breton's little attack kickstarts the quest, The Forsworn Conspiracy, where you learn that he was a member of a very much active and powerful, somewhat secretive society of rebels who seek to make the Reach independent of Imperial and Nordic rule. That woman he was assassinating, Margaret, turns out to be an Imperial spy from Cyrodiil. If you end up saving her, she'll offer some unique dialogue that allows you to complete the quest just a little bit sooner. It turns out that as we progress with this quest and learn more and more about Waylon, it seems he wasn't that bad of a guy. At least, he didn't think he was the bad guy. He thought he was doing what was right. And depending on your sympathies and how you decide to approach this quest, you can end up helping his organization. So while Waylon's death may be certain, whether or not it's in vain, isn't. And with that, we are going to wrap up. Five doomed characters in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Now, this list by no means encompassed all of the doomed NPCs in The Elder Scrolls V, so leave a comment down below which ones I missed and you'd like to see covered if we decide to do another one. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Thanks for stopping by, everybody, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.